When we tackle the topic of the different Christmas dates, two main questions come to mind. Number one, how many different dates are observed across the globe? And number two, when was Jesus really born? The answer to the first question is four. First, there used to be only one date, January 6. All of Christendom, as far as we know, used to celebrate on this day. Of course, there are some theories as to the origin of this date, but no one knows exactly how it came to be. All we can assert is, this was, to our knowledge, the first tradition adhered to by Christians. The second Christmas date is the widely recognized December 25th. A bishop of Rome of the 4th century is attributed with the alteration from January 6th to December 25th. And there are two prevailing theories as to why the change was enacted. First, a popular Roman pagan festival in honor of the sun god Sol Invictus was celebrated on the 25th and was still lingering in Christian circles. The theory suggests the change was made in order to dissolve the pagan festival within the likewise popular Christian feast. Second, pilgrimage. Christmas and Epiphany used to be celebrated on the same day, but we won't get into the details behind this because it would require a separate presentation. What is relevant to our topic is that pilgrims would come to the Holy Land to visit Jesus' birthplace, Bethlehem, and his baptismal place, the Jordan River. But these two locations would require a considerable transportation effort and time back in the early centuries. And thus, separating the two feasts would solve this problem. Christmas was moved to the 25th, and Epiphany was kept on the 6th. Eventually, every single church followed suit and until this day, celebrates Christmas on December 25th, except for the Armenian Church. We don't know for sure why we were the only ones to not adopt a new date, but an argument can be made, of course, blaming it partly on our stubbornness. Okay, I think I've said too much. Can you edit that part out? Great. The third date is January 7th, celebrated by some Eastern and Oriental Orthodox churches. It is often confused with the Armenians' January 6th. In reality, these churches are celebrating on December 25th, but they are using an older calendar called the Julian calendar instead of the more widespread Gregorian calendar with which it is out of sync for a total of 13 days. Of course, we won't be talking today about the merits of each calendar not to stray from our topic, but basically the consequence of this situation is that December 25th arrives 13 days later to those using the Julian calendar and that day corresponds with January 7th on the Gregorian international calendar. Finally, and fourth, as if it weren't enough that we Armenians had a Christmas date of our own, to spice things up even further, the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem celebrates Christmas on January 19th. Yes, you guessed it. It's because they're using the Julian calendar, 6 plus 13. They do so exceptionally because everyone else in Jerusalem has kept the older calendar. Now that I think of it, we're not that stubborn after all. In conclusion, all this information you were patiently following was to culminate in the more critical question, which one of the preceding dates is correct? When was Jesus really born? Listen carefully, because I found the answer to this question after much pain and research. The correct date of Jesus' birth I will reveal right now, right here. I'm kidding. I don't know. Nor does anyone. Because it was never recorded. Please don't aim your frustration at me, I'm just a messenger. I agree with you though. It's pretty inconvenient when people don't add a birthday to their Facebook account. Oh Jesus. Jokes aside, the lack of a definitive date should be no cause for sorrow. On the contrary, there is a beautiful message behind the mystery of Jesus' unknown birthday. To give someone a gift, a birthday gift, the giver first needs to learn the individual's birth date. And if that someone hasn't shared their birth date, I can think of two main reasons. First, they don't want a gift. Just FYI, I don't fall in that category, so if you like this video, don't hold back. Second, they cannot receive a gift. Dear friends, Jesus, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, 
cannot receive a gift because he is a gift. He is the gift, the perfect gift. May he be the one we yearn for always and the best gift we ever receive. A happy new year and a very merry Christmas.